Wow, 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 another video. Of all the videos that we've made in the three years almost that we've been doing this together, I've done a lot about photography, I've done a lot about video, done a lot of vlogs, a lot of stuff. One thing that I've never covered is a flash, an external flash for a DSLR camera, mirrorless camera, whatever. Now inherently, from a YouTuber's standpoint, any type of videos that have to do with audio, lighting, nobody likes them. They never do well, they never perform well, but I still gotta make it because it's important and I think no matter where you are in your journey as a photographer, hobbyist, professional, being able to have a flash or have used one or have experience with one or learn a little bit about it is important. Because full disclosure, I don't use a flash often anymore. When I was shooting events and I was being paid for events, weddings, any type of event, weddings were particularly where I used flashes and that's when I had about four of them. That's when I was using them rampantly. Rampantly? I was, I was, my use of flash was rampant. That's better, yeah. Now, not so much. I'm vlogging, I'm shooting stuff on the go, I'm using available light, I'm using a, a video light right here. I just don't really have a use for a flash anymore. But, today, we're talking about flashes. But I don't wanna talk about the typical flashes. You see, most professional grade flashes, you're looking at a 470 EX2 from Canon, a 600 EX, a 580 EX, you got all the Nikon flashes, the equivalents in Sony's, and all the other brands, they're, they're expensive. You're looking at like $600 Canadian. For me, anyway, that's a lot of money to spend on something that's not the most fun thing to buy when it comes to photography. You're like, really? I gotta spend $600 on a flash? That sucks. It's like when you gotta fix your dishwasher or something, or you need a, a new O-ring for your washing machine. No, that just sucks. Flash, to me, it's the, it's the equivalent. It's just not a good time. But the professional results that you can get by using a flash looks great. So the flash we're gonna be discussing today is not a Canon, it's not a Sony, it's not a Nikon. It is none other than Yong New Digital YN560. It's this one. So this flash is a hundred bucks. It's $99.99 on Amazon. Oh, that's Canadian too. Look at the reviews here. If we just scroll through all of these happy people, that's what caught my eye. I thought, how does it have so many reviews for being so cheap? Let's open it up, try it out, and then I'll talk to you about a couple of tips that you can do when using a flash and how to just get going with it. Start getting better portraits because uh, that is 100% what's gonna happen. hundred bucks. Get a little soft case, that's not bad. Just give you a nice little view of this. Get your screen on the back, all your buttons. That's the front, there's your sensors right there. Use these buttons to push forward, move up. That's like your little bounce card, so if the flash is pointing up, you got a little bit of bounce going forward. Your battery's in the side here. And two. Batteries installed, these feet, the hot shoe clicks into this, locks down. You can have it sitting wherever you need it. We're gonna put it on the camera. There's a lot going on here. It's not the most easy to use, but this does have the nice rotation, so no matter what orientation you're shooting at, you've probably seen pros or a lot of people that shoot events with their flash shooting straight up, and you might just be thinking to yourself, where is that going? How is that even? That's flashing the, the atmosphere. We're shooting that into, into the sun. And the reason for that is because if you were to point this straight at a subject and fire it, yes, it would light the subject, but it would just flatten everything with such a harsh light directly in front of the subject, it's not gonna be flattering, it's not gonna look good, it's gonna take away all the contour of someone's face. That's gone, that's why a lot of pros, a lot of people who know what they're doing with the flash are gonna point it straight up. There are ways to point it straight forward and get decent results that's using something like a light dome. I think there's one called the Gary Fong light dome that goes on top and uh, you've probably seen, it looks like Tupperware. Looks like a piece of Tupperware that just sits on top of your lens. In fact, there are people that use Tupperware instead of paying the premium and it's gonna diffuse everything 360 no matter if you're pointed straight up or if you're pointing that flash directly into someone's face. It's gonna make it way nicer. It's gonna give you that softer light. The same kind of softness that you're getting from like a video light right now. This light is diffused. So if I was to pull this down, all this diffusion, there's still another diffuser at the very back in front of that light. But you can see as an example right now, this light is a lot more harsh on my face. It doesn't look as soft and cinematic and evenly lit. Now, if this light was pointed directly at my face, you would lose all the nice shadow fall off on this side. It would just be full blast and it would be too much. It just never really looks that flattering. It would work, but it wouldn't work very well. So now we put this diffusion back. 
This is just a more natural, softer, organic looking lighting setup. That's what we wanna try and achieve with this as well. I don't want it to look like, oh, was that guy trying to figure out his flash settings when he took those photos. Now, back when I was shooting weddings, it was imperative to have that light dome on top of a flash and you're shooting the dancing and all that stuff and you wanna have a fast shutter speed and get nice, crispy, bright, sharp photos. It really helped without having to blind people and pointing that flash directly upwards to get that bounce along with the diffusion with the light dome on top, it just made real flattering images. Everything just looked really, really nice. And those instances that when you're shooting that type of event, it's hard to do. Your options without a flash are pump up the ISO really, really high, try to bring that shutter speed down a little bit lower to capture more light, but then people are moving around so fast that you're getting shutter drag and things are blurry and it's just starting to get weird. Especially you know, 10 years ago, shooting at 6400 ISO, that wasn't really an option. It just did not look good. Now with low light capability being way better in cameras, it's not as bad, but you're still gonna get a crisper, sharper image using a flash in those environments. And you're, you're guaranteed to just lock those shots off. The people who are paying you for those photos are probably gonna be happier when they're lit well. Now another accessory we grabbed on Amazon and all this stuff was like less than 120 bucks total is a little bounce card here. What this is gonna do is probably give you a strap. Drop that down, that's actually really nice. Like that's nicer than some of the ones I was using when I paid a lot of money for them. And now what you're doing, if you don't have anything like that light dome, because they're a lot more expensive, this was like 15 bucks or something. When the flash fires upwards, this large bounce card that has a lot more surface area is gonna direct some of that light forward. Here's an example of the flash just pointing straight up. Here's a portrait of myself. And then here's that same portrait using the bounce card. You can see how it fills in a little bit more. Now here's a portrait with the flash straight on. You can see that just doesn't look very good at all and you lose all of that contour that I was talking about earlier. So having this as an accessory or the light dome are really gonna help your photos when you're using a flash. One of the extra cool features using a flash is the wireless capabilities of a flash. There are things called wireless transmitters. You may have heard of the term pocket wizard before. There's a lot of different brands and what you would do, they're called flash triggers, like wireless flash triggers. You would set this up on a light stand or put the feet on and have it pointed somewhere and you would put that wireless flash trigger on top of your camera. So when you fire, the flash fires like a slave. So this acts as a slave, that trigger talks to the slave, it fires the light. That sounds just like a, like a good studio strobe. So one of the cool things to do is to set this up on a light stand, put them at diagonal corners of a dance floor with some sandbags, that's key. And using that radio remote, I could take super cool pictures of people and have that flash firing as backlight, having flares come over people's shoulders. And that was a really, really unique way to get awesome, unique creative photography when you're shooting stuff like an event. Now, a mode that this flash doesn't have that the Canon ones do that I'm used to using is a mode called ETTL, which stands for Evaluative through the lens. Now there's two versions of it, the first and the second. The second, I believe, uses the, the metering system, kind of like an auto mode for your flash. You leave it in that mode and it kind of just does everything for you and it knows when you're zoomed in, you're not setting the focal range of the flash to determine the output based off your distance and all these things. It's, it's kind of just like your dummies mode. You, you throw it on your camera, you turn it on, it meters everything great. It does a pretty good job. You can still adjust the power, but you're just ready to rock. With this one, you're gonna be adjusting a little more because it doesn't have that that specific function. It's got power saving too, which is pretty good. Cause if you're just like wandering around an event and you've got your flash on, power saving, that's cool. Using available light and natural light is gonna give you a different look than a studio lit portrait will give you. And it just comes down to what you're trying to convey or what you like as far as a photographer. All of our preferences are different. Now using a flash is going to give you sharper photos for the most part because brighter pixels equal sharper pixels. So is it a good accessory to have in your camera bag? At $600, I would say you need to be shooting events or have a professional reason to shell out that kind of money for a flash. If you're just a hobbyist and you're looking to dabble and learn more, Something like this for a hundred bucks with the bounce card, you can't go wrong. And so far, just having a first look at this, it looks pretty solid, but I will let you know if it fails via Twitter. So that's it for me today, guys. Just a super fast one for you. Wanted to touch on this. If you wanna go deeper into flash photography, I think it would be fun to maybe rent a studio and film a video on location, actually going through a photo shoot, maybe a professional portrait shoot with lights, strobes, different types of flash and the settings you might use. If you're interested in that, let me know. But as far as like a first look, for a flash under $100, because it's $99.99, I can say that. That might be the one you wanna look at. All right, that's it. We're done. We're done here. Hit the like button, hit the bell. 
mean, do what you want. It's your life, ultimately. I would appreciate it. You be you, okay? I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Bounce card. Oh, wait, no, no. Bow, 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 bow,